All right, welcome back, everybody. Let's keep going right where we left off at the conclusion of the last video. So we now know how to respond to when the user submits a form. So next up, let's die and dump the post super global and have a look. So back to Firefox right here, and you'll notice behind the scenes, uh, I've cleared out all of the notes so that we can start from scratch. Okay, so we will add some gibberish here, submit the form, and sure enough, we get an array of all of the, the inputs or the values from the form. Okay, so now the next step would be to take those values and insert them into the database, right? Into the notes table. All right, well, let's see how we might do that. All right, so let's do this. Let's go into notes.php, and maybe one more time, I'm going to copy and paste this, and then I'll show you a cleaner way that we can allow for things like this. Okay, so now I can say db query, and you know what? We haven't yet reviewed the syntax for an insert query, but I'll show you a little trick. Let's go to table plus and manually add a note, something, user ID is one, and I'll hit save. And you'll notice if I go to the history tab, here I can see a list of all of the actual SQL queries that are being executed within table plus. So yeah, in this case, it looks like we say insert into the name of the table, and then the columns, and then values, and then the corresponding values. Great, so this is especially useful during the learning phase. So let's go back to PHP Storm, and I'll use that. Insert into notes, the body and the user ID. And yeah, for the values, exact same thing. We're gonna leverage prepared statements so that we avoid any risk of funny business or, or a SQL injection. So yeah, the values will be uh, wildcards or parameters here body and user ID. And I will pass those through as the second argument. All right, so body will be post body. So grab the body uh, value or attribute from the form. And then we will do user ID. And yeah, we haven't yet reviewed uh, session handling or authentication. So I'm gonna hard code this, but I promise we're gonna get to it. All right, let's just see what happens now. So back to Firefox, give it a refresh. Keep learning uh, PHP. We save it, and we're not really providing feedback, which we probably should. But if I go to table plus and give this a refresh, and there we go, it works, we're in business. So hmm, very cool, but also very risky. And here's what I mean. Yes, you wrote prepared statements, which is great. You've avoided that potential uh, pitfall, but that doesn't mean all of your security concerns are solved. So have a look here. Let's create a new note. And I'm just gonna say, um, work on, and then I'll say within strong tags, something. And then why don't we add some classes here? So I know this website uses Tailwind, right? So why don't we say text red 500 and font bold? All right, interesting, right? What do you think is gonna happen here? We save it. We go back to our list of notes. Uh-huh, and it's red and bold. And maybe you're thinking, well, of course, what did you expect to happen? But this could be a really big problem, and here's why. I'll show you another example. How about within an H1, ah, 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 and then I'm gonna force the font size to be something insane, like, I don't know, 100 pixels, and then we're not done. I will open up a script tag and say, hi, from JavaScript. All right, yeah, let's see what happens here. Save it. We go to all of our notes. Now, every single person who visits this page is going to see an alert. Yes, yeah, so and now imagine you're building like a Stack Overflow site or something like that. If you didn't add the necessary uh, sanitizing and precautions, well now thousands and thousands of people are going to see an alert or, or something way worse uh, when they visit the page. And even beyond that, notice how because we gave the user full control, they've completely uh, borked uh, the presentation of our notes list. So yeah, clearly none of this is desirable. All right, how can we fix it? And let's see, yeah, we have a couple options here. One method would be to sanitize the body of the note before it enters the database. And yeah, that would work. Another option that's very common is to simply allow it to enter the database, but then always escape it when you display it on the page. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go into our list of notes. And yeah, right up here, here's where we display the note. And yeah, right here, instead of blindly echoing whatever the user has typed into that form, 
why don't we first pass it to a built-in PHP function called HTML special chars or cars. All right, so first let's see what happens and then we'll talk a little more. Back to Firefox, I give it a refresh. All right, good deal. It seems like we've solved the problem. We're no longer displaying an alert for every single person who loads this web page. And further, we've restricted the author's ability to control the presentation of this notes list, which is good. But yeah, just keep in mind, if I click on the note, right back in that same boat. So this is where we come back to that idea of the user is guilty until proven innocent. Or really, you don't even need to say until proven innocent. Just assume that they're trying to do something bad. Even if 99% of people are good, you have to assume that they're going to try something malicious. So that's why we run any user provided input or values through functions like this, HTML special chars. And you can see here, it's gonna convert all applicable characters to HTML entities. Yeah, so if I close this out, back to Firefox, view the source, or I'm sorry, let's go back to our list here and view the source. You can see, hmm, where are we? So uh, yeah, right down here. Mm -hmm. So notice how that HTML special chars function converted the angled brackets here and the quotes to their HTML entity equivalents. And when you do that, uh, this thing here is no longer treated as an HTML tag. It's treated as just a long string. And that's exactly what we want. Again, just to make it crystal clear, if I brought this back to what we started with and we give it a refresh, scroll to the bottom, now it is treated as HTML, which is why we see that alert. All right, good to know. So let's update this, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing anywhere else we display the note. So how about one right here? And I will paste that. All right, but as always, and I'm gonna tell you this a million times, uh, we're not done yet. There's still more things to consider. For example, what if I try to create a note and I don't provide anything? Does that work? Mm, seems like it does. All right, what if I just keep clicking this? Three, four, five? Yeah, what is that? Five or six notes that are empty? And if I come back to the list here, well, it's collapsed, but if I hit Shift Command C, yeah, here's all of the list items that are being rendered to display what is empty notes. And again, we don't want to allow that. So yeah, it can be a little overwhelming at times. I get it. There's so many things you have to think about. In this video alone, we leverage prepared statements to avoid the risk of SQL injection. And then we used the HTML special chars function to convert any potential HTML into their uh, HTML entity equivalents. And now it seems like we also need a layer of validation to ensure that the user, when they submit the form, is providing to us the values and the data and the types that we expect. So we'll take a look at that last element, validation, in the next video. I'll see you then.